a junior sports team. That's how Barack Obama viewed Islamic State just eight months ago. And now that the country has been forced to deploy its huge arsenal, the American president has admitted his administration was caught out by the threat posed. I think uh, our head of uh, the intelligence community, uh, Jim Clapper, has acknowledged that I think they underestimated uh, what had been taking place in Syria. I mean, he, he didn't say that, just say that we underestimated ISIL. He said we overestimated the ability and the will of our allies, the Iraqi army, to fight. That's true. That's absolutely true. Now, the U.S. is now stepping up airstrikes against Islamic State while cementing a coalition of the willing to help take the fight to the jihadists. Artis Paulus Lee now joining us live from Iraq uh, near Islamic State territory. In fact, uh, Paula, good to see you. You're in Erbil right now, which has seen some heavy action recently. Well, what is the situation in the region? Well, as you say, I'm in the Kurdish populated area of northern Iraq. and. Kurds, Iraqi Kurds were the first to suffer at the hands of the Islamic State or ISIS or IS. Just to remind you that Western involvement in the fight against the Islamic State initially involved them providing military assistance to the Iraqi Kurds. Now this later evolved into airstrikes and it is those airstrikes that have enabled the Iraqi Kurds to retain their largest and most important city of Erbil, which is in fact where I am. Life in the city is pretty much normal. I mean, it carries on pretty much the same, but the front line is not far from where I am. And of course, you have this constant influx of refugees. Talk to us about where exactly the latest U.S.-led airstrikes are, are, are taking place against Islamic State militants. Well, the fight against the Islamic State is happening on two fronts. First of all, it's happening here in Iraq, where you have countries like the United Kingdom, France, Belgium, Denmark, Netherlands and Australia, who have pledged that they will be providing military jets to the United States to help them in their fight against the Islamic State. And then you have other countries, for example, Canada and Germany, who are lending their support in the form of training, ammunition and weapons. And that is to enable fighters who are on the ground here to increase their strength and their military prowess. At the same time, there is fighting happening in neighboring Syria. Now there, the United States is being helped by the Gulf states. At the same time, overnight, there was another wave of airstrikes against strongholds of the Islamic State. And these included four oil refineries, one of which is on the Turkish border. This is the most important source of income for these jihadists hardest group. According to American estimates, the groups make in the region of some two million US dollars a day from being able to sell Syrian oil on the black market and they use that money to then be able to finance their activities both in Syria and here in Iraq. All right, in Erbil, Iraq, Artis Paul Aslir, thank you very much for that. Now, amid the barrage of U.S.-led airstrikes, Islamic State forces are reportedly learning methods in order to adapt and survive to this ongoing conflict. For example, they are uh, apparently uh, avoiding traveling in convoys, resorting to motorcycles and camouflaged cars instead. Also, reports suggesting the Islamists have spread thin and reduced their number of checkpoints in the field. They're allegedly also resorting to mixing with civilians in order to use them as human shields. Witnesses say jihadists are placing their flags on the rooftops of civilian buildings to try and divert foreign attacks.